Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'm looking at GIMP and I'm going to show you how to create a single image triptych in GIMP. Now I don't do a lot of GIMP tutorials, but if you want to see more GIMP tutorials then tell me that you do. Leave me a comment and leave me a thumbs up for this video. The more thumbs up and comments that I see, the more GIMP tutorials I'm happy to make. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. What I'm going to show you is how to create a single image triptych such as we have here. I have an image that we're going to size down to the right size and we're going to crop in GIMP and we're going to add this overlay to it so it looks like a single image triptych. Before we get started actually making the triptych in GIMP, it's worthwhile having a look at what we're actually trying to do. This is going to be an 11 by 8.5 sheet of paper, but in GIMP a lot of the time you're going to be working with pixels rather than inches, so it pays to know that there are 72 pixels in an inch. So my paper size is going to be 792 by 612. That's in pixels. My boxes are going to be 3 inches by 7.5 inches and if I need to know the pixel measurement I've just multiplied that out. 3 by 72 gives me 216 and 7.5 by 72 gives me 540. And for my horizontal spacing I want a guide here at 36 because that's half an inch. I want another one here at 288 because that's half an inch plus 3 inches plus half an inch. And I want another one here at 540, which is half an inch, three inches, half an inch, three inches, half an inch into my document. And the top one just down at half an inch. If you're finding it difficult to see this sort of mathematics in your head, then it may pay you to open a Word document or get out a sheet of paper and pen and just rough out these measurements so you know what you're working with. And once you know what you're working with, you're ready to get started in GIMP. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. And here I am in GIMP. So I'm going to choose File, New. And here's my new dialog. At this point, I can work in inches. It is an option. So I've got an 11 inch wide by 8.5 inch tall sheet of paper. Just going to Advanced Options. And I'm going to fill it with foreground color, which is white. So that's exactly what I want. So I'll click OK. And here is my GIMP document. Next up, I'll want to add my guides. So I'll choose Image, Guides, New Guide. And here's my guide dialog. And I know I want a vertical one at 36. So I'm just going to type 36 and click OK. This is one of the points at which you have to use points, not inches. Image, Guides. I know I want another new vertical guide at 288. I'm just reading this off the data that I've already created, or I've already done the mathematics of. Guides, new guide, and the last vertical one needs to be 540. Now these are just coming straight off this Word document. Let's just return to Word for a minute. And let's have a look down here. These were my vertical guides, 36, 288, 540. I need a horizontal guide at 36, so let's just go and do that. Image, Guides, New Guide. Drag my dialog back here, 36, and it needs to be a horizontal. Okay, so now I have my guides. The next thing I want to do is to add a new layer. So I'm going to choose here the layer, new layer icon. And this gives me the chance of adding a new layer. Now, this layer by default is the size of the original image, but I don't want that. And I can set inches. So I'm going to set inches because it's just easier. This needs to be three inches wide and seven and a half inches tall because this is the first of our boxes. And I'm going to fill it with black, which is the background color. So I have background color selected. So I'll click OK. And it's coming into the document, it's just not in position yet. So I'm going to click on the Move tool and just drag it so it snaps to one of my guides. Having created one layer and positioned it, now I can go and create the others. I'm going to right click this layer and choose Duplicate Layer. 
and now I can get my move tool and just move this layer into position. I'm going to do that once more. Duplicate layer, here's my third layer and move it into positions. So these layers are just snapping to my guides. That's really the only reason why I needed my guides. So now I can choose view and I can turn off my guides because I don't need them any longer. I need to merge these three layers. So I'm going to select the top layer and choose layer. And then I'm going to choose merge down. And I'm going to do that a second time, layer, merge down so that all these three box shapes are on the same layer. I'm going to click on the fuzzy select tool here and click on the first of these shapes and I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the other two so I've got all these black shapes selected. This is going to be my mask but I don't need the layer any longer so I'm just going to turn off the layer but you can see that these areas are selected. I'm going to right click on the background layer and now I can choose add layer mask. The options for adding a layer mask is to use the selection to initialize the mask too. Now I want to use the selection but rather than having the white bit around the edge cut out and leaving the black bit in place, I need to invert my mask because that will give me holes where the black areas were and I'll just click add. And there it is, there's our border that's going onto our photo. So I'm just going to make this a bit smaller because the next thing I need to do is to go and get the photo. Now to get my image I'm going to choose file and then open recent because I've had this image open recently so I'm going to choose it. It's called Sydney. Now because I want to print it at 11 by 8.5 I want to check and see just how big this image is so I'm going to choose image and then canvas size because I just want to check it out and let's go to inches and let's test this by typing a width of 11. You can see that the height is going to be 9.463. So while I can get the width to 11, I won't be able to get the height. Now I'm happy with cropping a little bit off the bottom or top of this image. So I'm going to settle on that for my canvas size. And I'm going to select here all layers because what I want to do is to actually shrink this image at this point. So I'm going to click resize and now my document is 11 inches wide but it's not eight and a half inches tall it's actually a bit more than that. So let's go and get our tools which appear to have disappeared and I'm going to get my rectangle select tool. I'm just going to start dragging over the image. I'm not worried about what's happening here right now because I'm more interested in the tool options because they're going to let me control how big this image is. Now the position on the x-axis I want to be zero so I want it to be over here so I'm just going to set that to zero and I want the size to be 11 inches wide and I want it to be eight and a half inches tall. You can see I'm working in inches here. And now let's see what we've got when I press the tab key to move beyond this. Well, you can see that this 280 is pretty hefty setting here. So what if we take it back to half and take it to about 140? What I'm looking at now is, is this a good crop for the image? And if I want to allow a bit more breathing space at the top, then I might bring this back up to 100. If I'm happy with this, I can now crop the image and this is going to be an 11 by 8.5 inch image. So I'll choose image and then crop to selection. So my image is now ready. It's 8.5 by 11 and I've got my overlay and now I just need to put the two of them together. So I'm going to come back to this image. Now let's view the layers and we can do that with Windows and Dockable Dialogs. Let's go and get layers. Okay. So I have my layer down here. What I need to do is to copy and paste it into this document behind. So in this image, I'm going to choose select and then all. And I'm going to choose edit. And I just want to copy the visible portions of the image. I don't want to copy anything else. So I'm going to click copy visible and just hide this image away. And now I'm going to choose edit and I want to paste as a new layer. So I'm just going to click paste as new layer. 
Now this image is way, way smaller than the rest of the image, but that's just fine. I'm going to click here on the Move tool and I'm going to move this shape pretty much into the middle of the image because I just don't want it to disappear when I scale it. With this now selected, I'm going to choose Layer, Scale Layer. And let's just bring this back into position. And what I want it to be is 11 inches by 8.5. And because the image size is now 11 by 8.5, this is going to scale up to the correct size and the correct pixels per inch. Now we're not going to have any degradation in quality here because we're working with straight lines. If we were scaling up something that had angled lines in it, we might have a few problems in pixelization, but we're not going to have that here. I'm just going to click Scale. And now the shape is scaled up to size. The only thing it isn't right now is in the correct position but I can move it into the correct position. I'm going to do that by first of all creating some guides. Now guides can also be created by just dragging a guide off the ruler line. So I'm just dragging this guide off this ruler line into position over here. I'm just doing it to something that I can actually see. Now I can see this line here so I can drag down a guide to here. I would drag it to whatever size I could see. And now with the Move tool, when I grab this shape, it's now going to snap to the guide. So as soon as I get it relatively close to where these guides are, it will snap. And that's ensuring that it's now in position over the top of the image. Having done that, I can then turn off my guides. I don't need them any longer. You know, I think that that shape is just maybe a pixel or two out, but I can just nudge it using the up and down arrow keys. This single image triptych is now ready to print. I'd save it and I would go ahead and print it. So there's how you can create a single image triptych in GIMP. And if you want to be able to do this over and over again, then you'll want to save that original image, this one here, so that you can open it any time you want to create a triptych and you don't have to actually create this shape. You'll have it all ready to just copy and paste into another image. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website for more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Illustrator, Lightroom and a whole lot more.